I haven't discussed the valuation of the Federal Reserve note for quite a while, and quite a number of Federal Reserve notes have been created, so maybe now's the time to provide an update. Over my decades of study, I've become more and more convinced that when it comes to evaluating the relative price of gold and the Federal Reserve note, there are two things that matter. First, the quantity of physical currency notes in circulation. Second, the number of ounces of treasury gold that are encumbered by gold certificates held by the Federal Reserve System. For the benefit of new subscribers, as well as to reinforce the reasoning with older subscribers, I will briefly, briefly restate the case. Here is the primary exhibit, listed right on the official website of the U.S. Treasury itself. It says, Congress has specified that a Federal Reserve Bank must hold collateral equal in value to the Federal Reserve notes that the bank receives. This collateral is chiefly gold certificates and United States securities. This provides backing for the note issue. The idea was that if Congress dissolved the Federal Reserve System, the United States would take over the notes, liabilities. This would meet the requirements of Section 411, but the government would also take over the assets, which would be of equal value. Federal Reserve notes represent a first lien on all of the assets of the Federal Reserve banks, and on the collateral specifically held against them. For the uninitiated, this might seem like a very alarming and conspiratorial statement, but dig through enough history and it makes complete sense. And the source of this paragraph is not me, but the U.S. Treasury itself. I won't go over the history of gold certificates in this video because I've made plenty of others that cover it. What you need to know is that the U.S. Treasury has monetized all of the gold that it has in storage. The Federal Reserve holds gold certificates that represent a claim on all of this gold. This claim is what serves as collateral for all of the Federal Reserve notes that it has issued. As stated here, the Federal Reserve notes represent a first lien on all assets of the Federal Reserve banks. These are the physical Federal Reserve notes that have been printed by the Treasury's uh, Bureau of Engraving and Printing, not the digital ledger entries, which are nothing more than credit that promises redemption of these physical Federal Reserve notes. And so what we have is really a gold fractional reserve banking system, cleverly disguised to make it look like gold has no part to play in what we call money. In the event that the government decides to dissolve the Federal Reserve System, their words, not mine, the U.S. would take over all of the notes. Of course, this would happen only in the event of a monetary emergency when complete confidence was lost in the Federal Reserve System. But if this were to happen, then the true value of the gold in storage in terms of Federal Reserve notes would be revealed to all. We would find that the notes themselves would be marked down because the collateral backing them is really no more than the amount of gold in storage. So let's see what this means in practical terms. In the latest Federal Reserve H41 statistical release, dated October 1, 2020, it is stated that the current number of physical Federal Reserve notes that are collateralized stands at just about $2 trillion. It is also stated that the book value of the gold certificates is a little over $11 billion. But remember, the current book value of gold certificates is at a gold price of $42.2222 Federal Reserve notes per troy ounce of gold. So this entry really represents 261.4 million ounces of treasury held gold. With a little bit of math, we can interpret what this means. The current market spot price of gold is about $1,900 per ounce. This means that the market value of the 261.4 million ounces of gold encumbered by the gold certificates is worth 496.7 billion Federal Reserve notes. Dividing the 1,983.6 billion collateralized Federal Reserve notes by the 496.7 billion market value of the collateral gives us a ratio of 4. So what does that mean? Put quite simply, it means that there are four times as many Federal Reserve notes in existence than the current value of the collateral backing them. In the event that Congress dissolved the Federal Reserve System, a power hinted at on the first slide, the collateral would need to stand for the notes. The notes would need to be marked down by 75% relative to the gold. After all, for each ounce of gold, there would be 7,600 Federal Reserve notes claiming it. 
Now, is this particularly annoying, uh, alarming? Not really. This is just a natural artifact of a fractional reserve banking system. In such a system, it is always the case that there is less specie on deposit than notes circulating. Those who choose to participate in the system via ownership of the notes do take a risk by holding the notes that there will someday be a bank run. At the same time, those who use the notes enjoy the convenience of transacting more efficiently than they could if they had to transact in physical gold. And they also have the opportunity to lend and invest their claims on gold. Now, fortunately, we all have the option to opt in or opt out via the ownership of physical gold. In times past, I suspect people were much more aware of the risk of holding bank deposits than they are now. So, we know that there are four times as many notes floating around as capital backing them. How does this compare with the past 50 years of history? Let's take a look. As we can see, over the past 50 years, the confidence in the Federal Reserve note has waxed and waned. In 1980, the confidence in the note was so low that the coverage ratio hit at the magic 1 to 1 number that I mentioned earlier. I am firmly convinced that it is the nature of the way that the Federal Reserve notes are collateralized that set the ceiling on the price of gold in 1980. If we hit that level of confidence again, gold will achieve a price of $7,600 per ounce four times where it is now. Of course, since the number of Federal Reserve notes is constantly expanding, the gold price required to cover all of those notes will only go up. But we can see in this chart, which has a historical average coverage ratio of 3.8, that a four times coverage is really in the middle of the extremes. Sure, we're nowhere near the low confidence levels of the early 1980s, but we're also a far cry away from the ebullient times of the late 1990s. The current trend suggests a strengthening in the gold price, but it could just as easily turn around and go the other way too. So what's a person to do? If we take a look at the last decade, we can see that 10 years ago, there were 951 billion notes outstanding. We currently stand at about 2 trillion, and this is an average rate of increase of 7.7% .7 per year. So let's think this through a little. If the confidence level in the dollar, and hence the coverage ratio, remains unchanged, if it simply stays at 4, and the past rate of increase in the quantity of currency persists, then we can expect the price level of gold to increase at a 7.7% .7 rate per year. I don't know of any paper asset, or at least any paper debt instrument, that can boast that level of increase without a supreme amount of credit risk. I would argue that this argues that interest rates would need to be considerably higher before it makes sense to participate in the paper game. If in 10 years, confidence in the Federal Reserve note reaches year 2000 levels, it will mean that we'll have roughly a coverage ratio of eight times. It will mean that we'll see the currency in circulation increase while the price of gold merely stands still. And that would be akin to a 0% nominal interest rate, kind of like what we have in most debt instruments today. So the downside doesn't appear to be all that bad. On the other hand, if we see a loss of confidence in the currency, then the coverage ratio will go down, and we'll see a price increase that is greater than the expected 7.7% .7 per year increase. I think this all argues for keeping savings, at least long-term savings, in gold rather than cash. The long-term worst case is probably a performance similar to a bank deposit. The long-term expected case is a 7.7% .7 per year rate of price increase. The long-term upside case is well in excess of 7.7% .7 per year. Now, of course, this is long-term. Over the short term, gold can be quite volatile. As I've stated before, it's good to keep some cash cushion available to meet emergency spending needs. This way, if the funds are needed and gold has just taken a large price dump, it won't be necessary to sell the gold at a loss. What could change my mind? If interest rates rise considerably, I might change my mind. 5% or better would tempt me to convert some, but not all of my gold. I'd also consider taking some of my gold uh, to place in cash if the price on gold were to shoot up considerably from here. As you can see from this chart, 
In 2011, the coverage ratio approached 2, and then the currency strengthened relative to gold, pulling the ratio back towards the average 3.8 value. With the coverage value now pretty much at historic norms, and with currency and circulation expanding rapidly, I'm comfortable with my current position. So for now, my gold will remain very still.